Welcome to MSUA's Game Changers Live, where we speak with satellite and mobile connectivity thought leaders about trends and technologies that you need to know about where satellite mobile connectivity is headed in the future. I'm your host, Lisa Dreer, and our guest for today is Steve Richardson. He is the VP of Sales and Marketing at Mission Microwave. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thanks, Lisa. It's great to great to do this again, and thanks to uh, MSUA uh, for putting these on. They're all, they're they're kind of fun to watch if you have time on a Thursday. Sure. Well, thanks for being here. Maybe we can start by having you just give a little bit of background on yourself and Mission Microwave. Sure. Let's um let's talk a bit about uh, Mission Microwave. The company's been around since uh, 2014, relatively young in the satellite industry, right? Um really ramped up uh, starting in 2017. I, I joined the company in late 2017 and uh, it's just been a, a great ride since then. Our, our customers have done some fantastic things that, uh, that we're proud to have enabled them to do by bringing to the market uh, some technology that, uh, some advancements in technology that uh, the market really, uh, really had some gaps for and uh, enabled some some new applications that are that are starting to appear kind of commonplace, but uh, stuff that really wasn't around five six years ago in terms of like small uh, small highly effective antennas and uh, and a higher power and solid state amplifiers. Great, great. So maybe you can talk a little bit about you know just simply giving us an update on what Mission Microwaves company is doing and what your offerings are. Okay, great. Um, well, just to, uh, I always like to start and point out that, you know, we're, where we fit on the value chain in the industry, right? I mean, we make solid state amplifiers and block up converters. And um, most of the users of satellite communications don't know what that is, right? It's a, it's a high value component in a ground terminal. So the, uh, it's where the RF power comes from for the transmission side. So we take a signal from a modulator, multiply it by a million times without messing it up, right? So taking something from milliwatts up to hundreds of watts without distorting the signal, right? That's that's what these uh, block up converters do, convert in frequency and power. Um, typically on a ground terminal, they're the high cost component that the antenna manufacturer will have to buy in because it's a unique expertise to make these. Um, antenna manufacturers focus more on the, on the optics, on the mechanicals, on the manufacturability of that. Uh, RF electronics are a discrete skill set. And uh, so those are typically bought in. Uh, and uh, we sell to uh, pretty much everybody in the uh, terminal market and the ground station, the ground side of the business, right? That's gateways and terminals. And that um, that's what we bring, right? You can see in, in the background behind me, we've got our trade show booth. Because the satellite show is coming up in two weeks, right? So it'll this is from last year. It'll look pretty much like that this year. But we make the we make round amplifiers, right? That's our our signature is the the stingers, the javelins, and the Titan product range that uh, have a unique shape, a lot of other unique features about them um, that differentiate them in the market, and and most importantly enable our customers to do new things with ground terminals that they couldn't do before. Great. So maybe talk a little bit about what are some of those things that they can now do. Um, sure. Let's uh, let's well mainly you know, smaller, right? Uh, mobility requires efficiency in uh, size, weight, and power. Right. And so what Mission Microwave, uh, the real value proposition that we bring is in in a word efficiency, right? We actually convert more of the power that goes into the amplifier into the RF power. Um, than any of our competitors in the market. We, it's, that's part of the magic in what we do. We're, we're more efficient. But the benefit of that efficiency is that you generate less heat, right? And that means in the, in the amplifier business, it's all about thermodynamic design. You, gotta have to get, you have to get rid of the heat that you gener generate. And the best way to get rid of that heat is with a lot of metal that saps the heat out, a heat sink. And uh, if you generate less heat, you can have smaller heat sinks, less metal, um, and so you make smaller products, smaller, more lightweight products. And if you're putting that on, you know, on a gateway that weighs 14 tons and is never going to move, not a big deal, right? But if you're putting it on a UAV or an on-the-move terminal or a maritime terminal that has to slew the amplifier around all the time, it's a very big deal. In fact, it's an enabler. 
there's an entirely new class of terminals made by companies like GetSat that are small, high performance terminals that go on mobile platforms and even helicopters, right? Mm-hmm. The entirely new segments of the market that pretty much didn't exist because you, you didn't have all the parts. Now, certainly our customers bring some magic of their own to do that. And we are an enabler to that because they need a small, powerful, reliable amplifier. So mm-hmm. efficiency that leads to better reliability, better, better performance and better size, weight and power. So that's an enabler for these new types of terminals um, that serve segments of the market that were really underserved before. And in the gateway market too, it, it actually does matter because when we get into size, weight and power, maybe not so much size and weight, but certainly efficiency is important because of a couple of things, energy costs, uh, you generate less heat that makes a more reliable product. And in, even in uh, earth large gateway antennas, typically you have to control the temperature environment and the, the less heat that you're dumping into that environment, the better. So, yeah. so the value proposition, proposition translates into the gateway market as well. And we've had a lot of successes of very high power, uh, 400 watt, for example, K band amplifiers that replace 500 watt TWT amplifiers that are the kind of the traditional go-to in the business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing more solutions for mobile applications. Are there other trends that you're keeping an eye on and that are influencing your direction as a company? Well, there, there's a very long-term trend of shifting from traditional kind of traveling wave tube amplifiers that I mentioned, the TWT amplifiers to solid state amplifiers. And, um, you know, we're right at the cutting edge of that in terms of enabling customers to make that shift because there are lots of benefits. It's you know, to simplify it. The analogy is like switching from incandescent light bulbs to LED light bulbs, right? A lot of benefits in terms of, of power, reliability, um, and they look cool, right? Um, <laughs> there's that <laughs> aspect. Um, so that's a, that's a trend that's been going on for years, right? It started on the space side and uh, some of our founding team was even involved in that transition. And it continues on to the ground side at higher and higher power levels. That's not to say that any of these are going away. They are, there are applications in the higher frequency bands where we are still a long ways away from solid state taking the place of traveling wave tube amplifiers. Um, you know, but it's kind of the inevitable march of technology as well. And mm-hmm. so we've... Uh, we have uh, certainly um, help advance that in some areas we, uh, with some products that, um, that we've introduced in the last few years that uh, customers came to us and asked, could you do this? And honestly, they didn't think we could. I hate to mean like we make a drop, a drop in replacement for the gateway market, yeah. a drop in replacement for a 500 watt traveling wave tube amplifier, drop in, same size, drops right in. Um, our customers asked us to do that. And when they asked us to do that, they really didn't think we could do it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we did. And they've been very happy with that. Wow. Amazing. So what types of use cases or industries are you supporting? Well, the uh, the market is, um, is, is, is split, right? Uh, our customer base, right? Uh, my customers are the people who make ground terminals, right? Whether they're gateways or terminals on mobile or fixed environments, right? And so there's a, a large government aspect to that, right? In the tactical terminal market, it's kind of an obvious benefit to be able to have something that's um, rugged and small, you can pack in a case, ship around, put up easily, um, and have commonality across the different parts of the product, whether it's a, the different bands and things like that, which we which we support. Um, on the commercial side, of course, there's the traditional aviation, maritime, and then the traditional kind of VSAT market as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one interesting uh, application we've seen is in uh, public safety, for example. And you, and you see, because the uh, first net, um, again, we've got a highly recognizable product, so you can't really hide it. It's not obviously plugged, but when you, you know, you see um, uh, Verizon's large vehicle on, uh, it was on uh, earlier this week, I heard on a, a, a Fox television broadcast uh, for the 911 show, they had this Verizon vehicle there and it's got a pretty recognizable solid state amplifier on the satellite antenna on that. And so that's a an interesting segment for us. And, and what's interesting about that one is, um, you know, those kind of applications have been around for decades. Um, what's driving them to products like ours is that 
these uh, portable gateways and disaster recovery things now need to support tremendous amounts of data, right? They're all like 5G cell on wheels kind of applications. And so they can't do that with a little VSAT terminal anymore. So these, these um, large terminals now, they typically have 100 watt amplifiers on it, which is pretty big. Um, and uh, you know, so they, they're putting large amounts of throughput forward through and bringing them into uh, disaster areas. So, so we see some really interesting applications there, right? You know, like mm -hmm. you know, something, uh, um, you know, something comes back to us, and uh, uh, we we look inside, and it's full of like, a, what the hell happened to this, right? And it turns out it was in a forest fire, supporting firefighters. Right? Oh wow! Um, so that kind of an interesting application. Um, and you know, it just need to clean it up. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, this is <laughs> remarkably fine dust from forest fires. That's not the first thing you think of, but that's right. a byproduct. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, what role are partnerships playing in your business? Oh, partnerships. Um, you know, partnerships explicitly. Um, the way we work with our customers, it's it's almost always a partnership. Again, we you know, not an official partnership with like contracts that say we're in a partnership, but because we're fairly low on the value chain and an enabler of these, right? We're very early in the design cycle. We work really closely with the product development team, the engineering teams, the customers, you know, it's, that's driven by marketing on their side, right? They mm -hmm. decide they want to have a terminal that's very robust. It's placed at the high end of the market and they work with us to come up with the right solution for that. So it's the most efficient in terms of performance, cost, design um, to be able to do that. So we don't, um, I, you know, I would say we, we don't really do partnerships, but you know, we sell to all the major uh, terminal manufacturers. And I think, um, I, I, I believe and hope that they would identify us as a partner with them on, on all of those because of the mm -hmm. way we work with them. Great, great. What would you say are some of the biggest changes and or new offerings, if you can talk about them, that we'll see from Mission Microwave in the next year or so? Well, um, we continue to, um, you know, expand in bandwidth, particularly at KA band. KA band covers a wide range, right? Multiple mm -hmm. applications, whether geosynchronous satellites, MEOs or LEOs. Um, so we continue to expand the product line to include more of those. Uh, more uh, more different band and power level offerings, and the um, I think one of the most exciting things about uh, what's going on at Mission though is actually the the growth of the company. Right, we've been doing this. Uh, um, I mean, you know, very rapid growth road mode for for five years, really steep growth year over year over year, kind of defeating the laws of gravity in terms of that growth, um, and that's. One of the things I'm I'm most proud of watching for the company, right? I mean, I'm a, I'm a second tier executive in the company, but our, our our leadership team writ large has really over the last year and a half, two years, um, put a lot more focus on to making it you know a good company, not just a good product, right? I mean, the, you have this product that supports your customers, and those are always first. But then how do you build a sustainable company? And so the leadership teams uh, put a lot of effort into that, right? Second year running, we're recognized as a great place to work, right? Thanks to uh, our, our, our HR director, our CEO, and the entire leadership team. And, and uh, the focus on that, I think, is, I, I mean, to me, I, I'm a remote employee, right? But I'm just so proud to see the company doing that because when you're caught up in the kind of success and growth that we've had, it's so easy not to do that stuff and just take it for granted that everything's going to be okay because you're growing the top line. But it's it's more than that. We're we're building, you know, with our customers, we're building a really good company. So I think that that's what I've been really excited about over the last year. Sure, we're doing cool new products and that's expanding and we're getting better at it as we go. We're putting a lot in R&D. We've got a fantastic team and we're growing at that. Uh, but it's that stuff that could have easily been left behind and, and those numbers would still all look the same that our team's doing that I think I'm, I'm really the most proud of, of being part of. That's great. Congratulations on that award. Right. That, that's that's, that's it's it's great. And it takes a whole team to do that, and the team, you know, all the way all the way down the org chart. And uh, again, uh, the leadership team out in and at our headquarters in uh, in Cyprus have done a great job with that. Indeed, are there? And, well, well, I'm going to mention that while because you know uh, 
our, our CEO, Fran Arricchio, is now on the board of the MSUA. Right? Yes. So I, I figured I'd put that plug in there for you. But, <laughs> uh, you know, so we're, we're excited about that, too. But that's part of it, that participation with the employees, with their families, with the community, with the professional organizations. You know, it's all, all, all part of that maturity of the company that I think has been the big milestone for us over the last 18 months. Yes, we are so pleased to have Fran on our board at MSUA. He has already made great contributions, so we're very pleased with that. Are there industry shifts that are, I guess, of particular interest to Mission Microwave that are happening right now? I mean, I think in the satellite industry, we're seeing probably more changes than, than ever. Is there anything you're kind of keeping an eye on? Well, I mean, you have to keep an eye on the stuff that's going on, you know, in, in, the, in the Leos, right? It, mm -hmm. it, it changes surprisingly little about what goes on. You know, the, look, the geo, the geo business is growing, right? And there are fundamental things going on in there, the geo in the, in the MEO kind of traditional earth station design, right? I mean, the stuff that SES, O3B, and Power is doing, the stuff that Biosat and Inmarsat are doing at KA Band that's pretty remarkable stuff too. And then you have all the stuff going on in the Leo environment. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, that's such a big shift. It, it's, uh, to my mind, it's effectively a different thing, right? I mean, during the, one of the things you, you talk about is, you know, MSUA has been in the business for 30 years. And, you, you know, you look back 30 years, I've been in the industry for about 35 years. And, uh, you know, we didn't even all have cell phones at the start of it, right? And so that all happened. And, and I think you, you look at that growth and what happened in cellular communications, and, and it changed it changed a lot, but it was a separate thing from what mm -hmm. we did in satellite communications. And I think largely what you see happening in the Leo market is, again, a separate thing. So it's going to be used, and you see people using it. it how much of the, the Leo stuff is a substitute for the stuff that the traditional satcom market does mm -hmm. i think remains to be seen i mean it's 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 more right we we add in but what we what our customers see what, what we hear from them is that you know sure their customers are using this leo stuff and it's great um and they and they still keep using the other stuff too they add it on top right, right. So uh, I don't know that they're necessarily, you know, a cannibalistic kind of relationship. It may even be more, uh, what's the commensalism? Is that the word? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I have, it's been a long time since I took eighth grade biology, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is that your prediction? I want my, I want to end with one last question that is, you know, MSUA has, like you mentioned, been around for over 30 years, 30 years. now and you kind of, Thank you. Yeah. And you look back 30 years and where we were back then. And I kind of want you to look forward and give your your one prediction about what may happen in the next 30 years. Uh, my one prediction would probably be less than you'd think. Right. <laughs> I mean, things things move not glacially, but but pretty slowly. Right. And mm -hmm. um Yes, I mean, there will be a lot of changes. There'll be shifts. There'll be things that get added in. Um, certainly, you're looking at, I mean, SATCOM's gotten so much easier to use and embed in many different layers of the telecom infrastructure. And it'll continue to get easier, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that we're part of that. We're an enabler of that. And so that'll continue to happen. Um, and, you know, it's the, the, the telecoms market continues to grow, right? Um, but, it's, it's, I think it's really dangerous to make guesses, particularly about the future. Yeah. Right? So um, I'll say it'll just you know hold your horses. Things things take a little bit longer than the hype cycle would indicate. <laughs> um, but you know some of them stick around, and yeah. uh, you know the business models have to have to work. And I think that's that's what we'll see shake out, right? I mean, I was I was a huge fan of web van in the day too, right? And it just didn't really mm -hmm. last. Great. Well, Steve, I want to thank you so much for being here today. It was a great conversation. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to seeing uh, MSUA, you, everybody at the satellite show in just a couple of weeks. Um, the booth will look pretty much like this. So it'll be, it'll, it'll be all set for it. 
Great. We can't wait to see you as well. And I do want to take a moment to thank the Mobile Satellite Users Association for hosting these sessions. You can learn more about the MSUA at msua.org. And we'll see you next time on the next Game Changers Live.